Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about five things people do in character that annoy their roleplay partners. So we were all new once, right? These are things that I know I certainly was guilty of, and you probably were too, and you might even still be doing some of these things. So before we get into the list, let's remember that roleplaying is largely writing for an audience of one. So what that means is if your partner is cool with something that most other people aren't, you just keep on keeping on, you do you, it's totally fine. But these are things that are largely universally not considered polite in roleplay. These are all going to be in-character things, so if you like this video, let me know. I can do a whole other video on things that are more like out-of-character behaviors that annoy other roleplayers. So first and foremost, number one faux pas that we all did as kids when we didn't really know what we were doing was god modding. So what is god modding? Even if you've never heard this word before, you've probably seen it. And essentially what it is, is controlling another person's character. God modding can be done directly, such as writing that a character did something or thought something that isn't your character to control, or it can be just a little bit more subtle. Consider its cousin, power playing. What power playing is, is making a character that's so strong or so cool or so smart that they always win. And essentially what this does is it makes it so the other character never gets to be cool or smart or show themselves off. Imagine someone you know in real life. We all know somebody like this, the person that will say, well, actually, and then come back with what their reality is for them and contradict whatever was just said. Well, power playing is kind of the role play equivalent to the well actually. So to avoid this, what we should be doing is sometimes letting our partner's character be the one to win the fight or solve the puzzle or get the compliment. Whatever kind of role play you're doing, we just want to make sure that your character isn't stealing the spotlight so much that the other person doesn't really get a chance to role play their character. And of course, never explicitly write what another character did or thought without permission. So the second thing we need to talk about, and this is related to god modding, but it doesn't necessarily cross over into influencing another character, but it's having a flawless character. This is also sometimes called a Mary Sue. Now, this is the only time I'm going to say the word Mary Sue, and I'm saying it just so that we all know what we're talking about. But from here forward, I'm going to say flawless character because Mary Sue has a lot of connotations that I don't really want to get into in this video. So these kinds of characters are just plain not fun to play against. Everyone wants to feel special. So if you have a flawless character, what that means is that the other person's character never gets a chance to feel special. We talked about this really briefly in the strengths and weaknesses part of a previous video that I did about building characters, but let's expand on this just a little bit more. So a character without weakness might seem fun to play. Power fantasies are really attractive. Hollywood has capitalized on this for decades. But role-playing isn't a two-hour movie. So what you're really doing when you make a flawless character is you're taking away all of the potential conflict and all of the growth that your character could be doing that make that role play really fun and engaging for you. So think about books that you read or TV shows that you watch, something longer than a movie. How boring is it for a character to be exactly the same at the start as they are at the end when you've invested so much time in that particular series? It's so boring. If you feel your character is flawless, then they're not going to go through any growth or development. So if you only have roleplay partners stick around for a short time before they bail on you, you might want to examine if you have a character that's too flawless. Because what you might be doing is boring your roleplay partners, and so that's why they're leaving. Now, of course, there's lots of reasons people could bail on a roleplay. This isn't the end-all be-all. It's just something to think about if that's happening to you a lot. So next is number three, and that's metagaming. So what is metagaming? It's a word that we don't really hear quite as much as god modding, but it can be just as destructive to your roleplay experience. So essentially what metagaming is, is taking information that you know out of character and using it in character, even if there's not a way that your character would know this information. So consider a roleplay or an interaction where one character has a secret. Through plotting together before you start roleplaying, you learn what that character's secret is. This doesn't necessarily mean that your character knows what the secret is, though. And if you say that your character knows that secret without thinking about maybe how they could know that secret or without discussing it with the other person, that's metagaming. This can also happen in the middle of a thread. Say that someone is putting in their replies things that their characters are thinking. If you suddenly use this information in your reply, then that's metagaming. Unless your character has explicit psychic powers or something like that, there's no way they're going to know the thoughts of the other person. 
And this can really make it so that the other person is discouraged from putting those little tidbits and character development in their reply. So don't do it. Okay, so number four is forcing plots. You'll usually see this in reference to forced shipping, but it could be applied to any plot of significant intensity. So what kinds of plots am I talking about? So romance plots, that's gonna be the forced shipping, but we're also talking about plots where maybe there's significant injury or death. That could be a forced plot as well. Or the plot might involve some kind of trauma or some kind of power exchange. If you've got something that's going to significantly affect the other character or be of significant intensity, it needs to be discussed beforehand before it's forced into the role play. So the easiest example of what I'm talking about is when we're talking about a thread that involves a fight. I always like to discuss who's gonna win that fight before the thread starts. That way we kind of know where we're going and we're avoiding that forced plotting. So the core of this is if you ever want your muse to get involved with another character in a way that's gonna significantly affect their muse, ask first. And if they say no, thank them for their time and move on. Now, of course, if they say yes, then go ahead and role play and have fun. They might also say, let's just play it out. And this is an okay thing to say as well, because the important thing is that you asked and you establish that open communication. That's what's going to help you avoid this particular role play blunder is making sure that you have good communication with your partner. Because what's going to make them feel forced is if they can't come to you and tell you, hey, I didn't like this or I don't want to do this. So everything we've talked about so far essentially comes from being too aggressive in our role playing. So being aggressive is really bad and not something we want to do. We want to be assertive. But the other side of that spectrum isn't so great either. So let's talk about passive posting. Passive posting is when we miss the and part of the yes and improv rule. So remember, role playing is like an improvisational writing exercise. So what that means is that every reply should accept what the other person has wrote and then build on it. And I know we've all had this experience where we get a reply and we're all excited to go read it and go do our reply and we get there and we read it and there's nothing. So it might be a wall of text even, but that text doesn't actually say anything actionable. So what I mean by that is that maybe the post is all inner monologue and nothing actually happened that you could reply to. Or maybe in your reply, you put an object in front of the other character and they didn't write anything about what they did with that object. Or maybe you posed a question to them and they just never answered it. So how do we avoid this? Before pressing enter on your reply, step into the shoes of the other mun for a moment. Read back through your reply and think, if I had to reply to this, how would I? If you don't come up with much, then don't hit enter yet. Add some more stuff in. And I know what some of you guys are thinking. You're nervous. You don't want to come off as too aggressive or controlling in the role play. But being passive is just as bad. Instead, we want our role play to be assertive. Being assertive is making sure that everything that you're doing not only respects your time and attention, but also the other person's. So just because you have a shy do more character doesn't mean you get the license to hand the plot reins over to the other person and make them do all the work in the role play. So what does this all boil down to? What do all of these behaviors have in common? It's communication. A key to role play is having good out of character communication. Having good communication is going to improve all of your in character interactions. And the great thing about it all boiling down to communication is practice makes perfect. If you're not great at it now, that's okay. Keep practicing and keep these things in mind and you will get better. The other wonderful thing about it all boiling down to communication is every time you're improving your role play, you're also improving your other skills where you're using communication. So you're gonna be able to apply this to real life problems and conversations as well. So which of these did you used to do or maybe still do? I know at one time or another, I was guilty of all of these things. Are there some other in-character things that annoy you maybe that other role players do? Let me know down below. I'd love to hear about your stories related to that. So remember to like if you like this video, comment down below with any questions that you have, subscribe for more videos, click that bell for notifications, all of my social media down in the doobly-doo. Thank you so much for watching and make it a great day.